Hi everyone and welcome to the penultimate round report from Chorus 2010. There were only two wins in the 11th round. Jan Smeets won a miniature against the luckless Van Whaley who employed the same Sicilian variation that he'd already lost with twice in the tournament in earlier rounds. The other win went to Vichy Anand in his game against Vladimir Kramnik which was a great game and one I decided to show for this video. They're fairly big rivals of course and it was Kramnik who last challenged Anand for the world title back in 2008 which Vichy won very convincingly. His preparation was excellent and his usual tactical sharpness was clearly in abundance. Almost all of those games started with d4 but this game Anand opened with e4 and Kramnik answered with e5 which is fairly common from him these days. After knight f3 he played knight f6 which is one of the most annoying defences out there, Petrov's defence. It's a great drawing weapon for black at the top level and similarly to the Karo Khan it's very hard for white to get any advantage against it out of the opening. Kramnik has been using it all of his life so it's no surprise to see it here in this game. It's a very old opening that's undergone extensive analysis and play continued along one of the many book lines. But knight takes e5, d6, knight f3, knight takes e4, d4 and d5 which doesn't lose a tempo overall as white has moved this knight three times already. So bishop d3, knight c6, castles and bishop e7 is all normal stuff for this opening. c4, knight b4, attacking the bishop, so bishop e2 preserving the bishop pair. And now crown knight castles, knight c3 and bishop f5. Playing instead, knight takes c3 gives white an edge after b takes c3 and knight c6. He's able to gain some tempi with c takes d5 and use the open b file for a pressure on the black position. So bishop f5, a3, knight takes c3, b takes c3, and knight c6. And we're still well within the known book lines of the opening, which continue well past move 20 in many variations. So rook e1, moving a rook to control the open file, which is logical play, and Kramnik countered with rook e8. Now came c takes d5, queen takes d5, bishop f4, rook a c8 to defend the c-pawn. Now h3, stopping any bishop g4 ideas, and bishop e4 from Kramnik. And Vichy pointed out at this stage that all the moves so far are well-known theory, he referred to it as a well-trodden path. And here he finally deviated from the book lines with queen c1, which he said afterwards was just a little move to get things going, and added that he was curious to see what Kramnik's preparation was. And Kramnik continued with knight a5, which is preparing to use the c4 outpost, and a move played perhaps with the hope of provoking the c c pawn forts, which is fatally weakening the d4 square, and at least temporarily the d pawn. So queen e3 from Vichy, and at this stage Kramnik thought for a long time but apparently didn't come up with anything too concrete so he decided to play as solidly as possible with bishop f8 at least unmasking the rook at e8 as the white queen has now moved to the e file but this move gives white an edge that Vichy never lets go of but instead here was bishop f5 where after knight e5 it's an equal position so bishop f8 and now c4 which is the correct move from white to keep his edge it looks on the surface like a pawn sack but of course it's not Kramnik continued with queen d8 which keeps white's advantage to a minimum and retains overall solidity in the black position playing instead knight takes c4 loses a piece the bishop takes c4 queen takes c4 and knight d2 forking the queen and the bishop so queen d8 and now knight e5 and the knight arrives at a powerful square with tempo because the bishop at e4 is now undefended from uh, the queen here at e3 so bishop f5 and queen c3 because there was a threat of f6 winning this knight here thanks to the pin um, because of the rook and the queen when it was on e3 and again this move comes with tempo due to the attack on the undefended knight which Kramnik now defended with b6 and now Vichy got his only uninvolved piece into the fray 
with rook a d1 and all of white's pieces are now nicely developed coordinating well and clearly superior to black's and white's main idea here is to play d5 um, so what rook d1 has prepared and Kramnik answered with queen f6 f6 which prevents white from playing d5 or he can just take this um knight with his rook and after bishop takes and queen takes and that's uh good for black of course so Vichy answered with queen g3 which gives the knight at e5 another defender and again makes d5 playable so Kramnik again stopped it with knight c6 and Vichy instead of continuing with d5 immediately found a stronger alternative knight g4 which gaining a tempo on the queen and after queen g6 he's now able to finally play d5 gaining space in the center with tempo on the knight. He could have played bishop takes c7 here instead but he said after the game that he felt it resulted in a slightly unclear position and that d5 was a safer continuation and thanks to his superior control of e5 there's no knight e5 here which would be the best move for the knight so Kramnik is forced to play a more passive move knight a5 and now Vichy did take on c7 which creates a passed pawn at d5 and here Kramnik came up with a questionable continuation in a bid to get some counterplay for the pawn with bishop c2 and after rook c1 playing knight b3 but this is a blunder better was bishop f5 where one line runs c5 h5 and knight e3 where there's a small amount of compensation for the pawn but it's hardly anything so knight b3 anyway from Kramnik if you want to try and spot why this is a blunder then stop the video now rook takes c2 is the reason why and this is the beginning of a very deep combination from the world champion queen takes c2 of course is the forced response and now comes knight h6 check exploiting the pin on the g-pawn and giving black only one response king h8 and now comes knight takes f7 check so white has two pawns for being the exchange down and materially it's equal but anand still has more tricks up his sleeve again kramnik has only one move here king g8 so now comes knight h6 check king h8 and here Vichy commented that it was the first time he'd played a repetition to get time on the clock in his life as they have 30 seconds added after each move here and here he played knight f7 check which Kramnik and many spectators were amazed with believing that Vichy was taking a perpetual check but this is only the second repetition as the first time the knight was on f7 it took a pawn there so it's only the second time this position has been reached so there's no repetition so now king g8 now knight h6 check he's again that time on the clock so now he's continuing with uh, his proper plan for the game which is bishop e5 a vicious move it pre prevents g takes h6 and threatens knight f7 check followed up with knight d6 where there's no bishop takes d6 because of the mate threat on g7 so it's going to win the exchange and white will be two pawns up and have a one game and Kramnik thought for a long time here and decided on queen g6 in order to defend but Fritz didn't like this preferring instead knight c5 where white's advantage is still substantial but not quite winning just yet if um, knight f7 check king g8 and uh, knight d6 now there's knight e4 as a defense um, but as I said white is still better so queen g6 anyway and here Vichy played bishop g4 which he spent a long time calculating and figuring out until he got to a pretty much forcing line there's um, a move four moves from this position that he had to be sure wouldn't work as a defense for black and once he was comfortable that that was the case this is the move that he went with this bishop g4 attacking the rook here at c1 or c8 sorry but Fritz didn't like it preferring instead queen takes g6 and after h takes g6 bishop d1 and white should win the end game comfortably but 
there's a reasonable struggle ahead. Black can put up a pretty solid defense for a while at least. So bishop g4 anyway. Okay, that's the end of part one.